What is going on everybody? Shwayze here and in today's video we're going to be talking about five things that I love and five things that I don't about the 2023 Infiniti QX80. Okay, the first thing that I love in no particular order really has to do with the styling of this vehicle. Now, this is the second redesign of the QX80 since it was released back in 2011. The latest redesign, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now, was released back in 2018, and I think it still looks pretty good. Um, I think it definitely has a luxurious vibe to it. When I was walking out of the gym the other day and approaching this vehicle, this thing looked luxurious. I mean, there's no denying that this is not a luxury vehicle because it has the necessary necessary touches to be luxurious. Beautiful chrome all over the front end, and even if you don't like chrome, I think you'll like it in this application because it fits the size and styling of this vehicle. It's not overdone, there's not chrome around the wheel well and on the running boards, but it's just little touches here and there like on the side vent, the side view mirrors, you've got a little bit around the windows, and then over in the back, just some subtle touches between the tail lights and then this little bumper guard over here as well. But that touch of chrome with this color and just kind of the size of this vehicle, it definitely looks luxurious, it looks premium. And along with that, I love the look of the interior almost even more because take a look at that quilted leather over there, looks really premium, really nice. Everything is soft touch over here, all of this is leather. Take a look at this wood over here, it really does look really nice. It's not piano black plastic like it kind of looks like it is, but it's not. And it wraps around the dashboard, I love this little section over here because it makes it curve around the dashboard giving it kind of just this cool finished look to it. And I mean just take a look at these seats, they look so nice. I love I love the interior of this thing because it really does look very, very premium. You know, anybody who sits in this vehicle is going to immediately be able to tell that this is a luxury car. There's no denying that because of just these nice touches all throughout the cabin, including soft touch material up here on the dashboard as well. My favorite is actually the second row because this one has kind of the premium touches with the two eight inch infotainment screens up here as well. Uh, but the styling is just gorgeous, even in the second row. I just love how this little area looks. It just makes it look so finished and premium. Also, take a look at this quilted leather on the back of the driver and passenger seat. I mean, it's definitely unnecessary, but man, it looks really good. That's gotta be one of the first things I really love about the QX80. Okay, now speaking of the second row, the second thing that I love about this vehicle really has to do with the second row or rear seat entertainment systems. Now, I gotta say, I think being a second row passenger in the QX80 is the best part of this vehicle. First of all, you do have these dual eight inch displays over here for both the driver and passenger side and there's just so much functionality built into these displays so you can go and mirror from your phone you can actually plug in different devices using the HDMI port over here and the USB cable you can even stream whatever you want because there is Wi-Fi inside of the vehicle so so many different ways to just sit in the second row and have some rear seat entertainment and another cool add-on is this actually does tilt a little bit backwards because well these seats actually tilt a little backwards as well so you can recline these seats pretty substantially and that way you can actually lean back but still enjoy a great view of these screens and kind of just kick back and relax on road trips. I think this is definitely one of the vehicle strengths. The other thing to note is if you don't get this bench seat you can actually equip it with like captain's chairs where you have this large compartment over here further separating the passenger and driver's side and making it kind of a luxurious experience in the cabin. So if you don't need this bench seat I would recommend getting that other option. Now another thing to mention about these displays not only can you plug in your auxiliary jack over here and just plug in right regular headphones, but who needs that when you can open up this compartment, uh, and this is actually the same center arm console for the driver and passenger side, but the rear passengers can pull out wireless headphones. So you can connect to either device, uh, passenger or driver's side, and connect these wireless headphones and enjoy some in-car audio without disturbing anybody else. Without having some old school wire hanging out of your screen, you can just use these wirelessly, and then when you're done with them, just store them back in here and close this compartment and it's like they never existed. Another thing to mention back here is you do have your rear climate control settings. So lots of different functionality here with different fan speeds. You can even change the mode to just target your feet or your face or whatever have you. You also have rear heated seats with two different levels as well. You also have two USB ports, one for each side. So both occupants can charge their devices. And then down here, you'll see there's two little plugs over here. One is a 12 volt power adapter, uh, like a cigarette lighter adapter. And then the other one is your regular household outlet. So you can actually plug in like a video game system, plug it into the HDMI port and play video games in the backseat of your QX80. It makes it extremely convenient if you have younger kids that really want some rear seat entertainment. Now for the third thing that I love about this vehicle is 
really quite simple, but it has to do with how easy it is to access the third row. Now, a lot of vehicles, especially in this price point, have some fancy contraptions where you push a button and the entire seat will move forward or fold in on itself. It'll even move the passenger seat so that you can get greater access. But all of those features are incredibly slow because they're all motorized. This one, on the other hand, is simple, quick, and it's probably not gonna break as often. All you do is just pull on this lever, and the entire seat lifts up and it works seamlessly every single time, giving you much wider access than just having kind of the seat fold forward. The only downside to this is you can't really keep a car seat in the seat and still have it fold, but I would recommend just leaving it in the passenger side and then just giving you greater access to the driver's side or vice versa. It's super easy to put back down and there's no other hooks or anything. You just fold it back up and it goes into place. So let me show you how that looks one more time. It's so simple and it's just satisfying. I love it. Great job, Infinity. I'm making it simple and not super techy and advanced or something that can break. Now, one of the things I really love about this vehicle is just how insulated you feel inside of the cabin. Uh, you just feel like you're in your own ecosystem. Uh, it's almost like you're at your house and you just happen to be moving around from destination to destination. I don't know how Infinity does it, but you do feel very insulated from the outside forces when you're sitting inside of this vehicle. I don't know if that has to do with the fact that the ride quality is actually really soft on this vehicle. Um, it's not so soft that you can't feel any types of bumps, but for a 6,000 pound vehicle to feel as soft as it does, that's very impressive. But I think even more than the ride quality, the other thing that contributes to the serene environment inside of the cabin is just the level of sound deadening inside of the car. Uh, you do not hear anything going on outside of you. Uh, it's just very, very, very quiet. I think they did a fantastic job with the sound deadening in the QX80. It is so amazing that I was actually talking on the phone with somebody the other day uh, and driving around 45 miles an hour and they had no idea I was inside of a vehicle. But when I'm driving my Bronco or my Challenger, they can immediately tell that I'm driving a car. So that just goes to show that even though this thing has a big burly V8, it's massive, it's just a giant vehicle overall, it's still so quiet inside of the cabin. You may not even be able to catch any of the road noise going on around me and I'm going about 40 miles an hour right now. It really is a very serene environment. That's gotta be one of the things that I really love about this vehicle and why I enjoy driving it around is it automatically just puts me in a peaceful state because everything is so quiet and luxurious and comfortable. Now the next thing I love about this vehicle is just how easy it is to drive. Uh, and there's a couple parts to that. First is how easy it is to get in and out of the vehicle. Now you would think with this vehicle being so massive and large and tall, I mean, I think it's about as tall as my Bronco, you would think it'd be hard to get in and out of. And no, the answer to that is it's extremely easy. It's almost easier than any other crossover I've stepped into. And of course, that's mainly due to the running boards that are attached to the vehicle that make it really easy to step in and out of. But if you happen to have maybe older parents or something like that that you need to get in and out of the vehicle, it's very easy to do because the running boards are quite low to the ground, which make entry and exit very simple. Now, the other part of that is just how easy it is to understand the proportions of this vehicle. Again, knowing this is such a large three row SUV, you would think it'd be hard to know exactly where the rear quarter panel is or what your blind spots are. And the answer to that is it's not. It's actually very easy to hop in this vehicle and immediately know what the corners and the edges are and what the proportions of this vehicle are. Um, the steering also is very buttery smooth. I mean, it's gotta be one of the softest steering wheels I've ever experienced and it makes driving this vehicle much simpler. Here I am driving over some train tracks. Uh, but it makes this vehicle much simpler to drive because it's just so effortless to turn the steering wheel. And the 360 degree camera also helps with that too, but you almost don't even need it because this vehicle doesn't feel as massive on the inside as it does on the outside. Now, the last part of the maneuverability that I love about this vehicle has to do with its passing power. And here I am gonna step on it real quick. And it's not a quick vehicle by any means, but that big burly 5.6 liter V8 that has 400 horsepower, 413 pound feet of torque, that thing is plenty enough power for a vehicle like this. I mean, you don't want this to be a sport SUV. This is obviously not an AMG product or an M Sport, and it's not intended to be. This thing is meant to be just the perfect daily driver, the cruiser that you could take on a road trip. It's very smooth power delivery. It's got a lot of low end torque, so when you really need to step on it, especially from like zero to 30, it's got enough power to actually kind of launch it into the back, you know? It's it's not insane or anything like that, but it's plenty of power to get this thing moving. I haven't once thought that this vehicle felt underpowered in my week-long experience driving this car. Great for the freeway, great for day-to-day -day driving, 
not so great for MPG, but that's kind of to be expected for vehicles of this size. And they really did a good job with this 5.6 liter. No wonder they've continued to use this engine year after year. Okay, now let's discuss the five things that I hate about the Infiniti QX80. Uh, now, in all honesty, there's nothing I extremely hate about this vehicle. It's really, really well made. It's tried and true. It's been out for a very long time. And it's a very popular and handsome looking vehicle. But just like every car on the market, there is room for improvement. And I think there are a few features that I wish this vehicle did a little bit better and well, this is some constructive criticism. So in no particular order, let's get started. All right, to kick things off, the first thing that I hate about this vehicle has to do with the fact that this does not come with an all digital gauge cluster display. Now, majority of the competitors in this price point offer an all digital display, a 12.3 inch screen or something along those lines. And it just adds a little bit to the premium feeling of the interior and also provides additional functionality. My issue with this screen is not that it's bad quality by any means, it's Actually pretty high definition overall but it is kind of a smaller screen I don't even know the exact proportions I think it's probably seven inches but as soon as you get like some sort of alert on the screen as you just saw earlier it kind of takes up the entire screen and blocks you from really doing anything else Plus, it's kind of hard to navigate. So you do have these buttons over here on the steering wheel on the left and right hand side. This is mostly for your cruise control, but this is what operates the different sections over here. And the issue with that is you have different buttons for left and right, different buttons for up down, then another button for okay. And so it gets a little bit kind of clunky and awkward to use. And I kind of struggle when I first pick this vehicle up to use the back button or do I use the left right button? And how do I navigate this little screen? And it's kind of hard to really get accustomed them to because when you're looking out the window you don't really know exactly where your thumb is located over here on the steering wheel and there's so many buttons here that it's hard to keep track and there's really just not that much functionality here it kind of just gives you the need to know information but it doesn't have any kind of fancy graphics or you know digital displays or anything like that where you can actually change the gauge cluster and even though they look pretty good on the analog side they're just not up to par with the competition the other thing that kind of makes me angry about this is the fact that i reviewed an infinity qx60 which is the smaller brother to this vehicle. It's actually a three row crossover, but it's not as large as this one. There's not as much rear leg room. And even that vehicle had an all digital display and it was really nice. I liked it. It was one of the things I really loved about the vehicle. And so I don't understand why that vehicle, which is about 20 grand less than this one, doesn't have all digital display. Another thing to mention is this is the highest trim level. I have the QX80 sensory edition. So there's no higher trim level to say, well, maybe I'm just missing that option. This is just not included in the current generation. Infinity QX80. Okay, now the second thing that I hate about the QX80 has to do with its safety features, or I should say lack thereof. Now, this vehicle comes with all the standard stuff like blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, you know, it has pedestrian detection and emergency braking. All that stuff is standard, which is great. But there is one vital safety feature that I could not activate and I think it's missing from this vehicle and that has to do with a lane centering assist function or however you want to call it. But essentially what that safety feature does is when you're driving on the highway, it will keep the vehicle centered down the lane and even when you're going through some curves, the vehicle will stay planted in the middle and actually steer the car left and right as necessary to keep you centered in the lane. This vehicle does not have that. It does have a lane departure prevention system, which I believe just kind of pushes you back into the center, but it does doesn't actually keep you centered. It just kind of pushes you if you happen to cross the lane. But it didn't even work for me in that instance. It also has a lane departure warning system, which vibrates the wheel if you started to cross the lane. And that feature is even more annoying because it makes off a really loud noise and vibrates the wheel aggressively. And I've had to turn it off because I've been that annoyed with it. But the two things combined don't actually center the vehicle in the lane. I think that's a very important feature to have because this is a road trip type vehicle. You have three rows, lots of entertainment. This is a vehicle that would be awesome to take on a road trip. And that is a nice feature to have, especially for a vehicle at this price point, around $90,000. A lot of the competitors do offer that, even if that is just an option to buy, this one does not have that option. The other thing that's weird is, again, the QX60 that I reviewed a few months back did have this lane centering. So I know that Infiniti and Nissan have this technology, they just don't wanna implement it into their most expensive full-size SUV. Another thing that I hate about this vehicle is the lack of a panoramic sunroof. Uh, yeah, this is the largest sunroof that you can get on this vehicle, which by itself is actually pretty small for a full-size SUV. But a lot of the competition offer a full panoramic moonroof 
And unfortunately, you cannot get that even as an option on the QX80. And I'm not sure why, because I get this is an aging platform. It was released back in 2011, but that doesn't mean that you probably can't cut a hole in the roof and create a larger sunroof, unless for some reason it compromises safety. But I think this kind of just shows the aging architecture of this vehicle where they do not have the option for a panoramic sunroof, which would make the rear seat entertainment even better and more luxurious. Every time you put in a panoramic sunroof in a vehicle, even on non-luxury cars, it automatically makes it more luxurious. I mean, think of the Hyundai Palisade, which has a beautiful panoramic sunroof, the Kia Telluride, those all have those options, and the Infiniti QX80, which is almost double the price, does not. Now, for the next thing that I don't like, it really has to do with the fact that this vehicle doesn't really come with any form of interior ambient lighting. I mean, you do have a little blue light up here that shines down and kind of lights up this little infinity section, and you have a little blue light in this handle that shines on these window switches, but that's not really true ambient lighting. It would have been really nice to see some sort of, you know, LED strip that wraps around this wood, or maybe just right around this section over here, or even down here on this arm console, you know, if it had this light that wrapped around, Ambient lighting is kind of a silly feature, right? Nobody really needs it, but it does make the interior look more luxurious and more premium than other vehicles. That's why a lot of luxury vehicles have way more ambient lighting than non-luxury vehicles. But even the Hyundai Palisade that I reviewed, that one had ambient lighting, although not very much and pretty subtle, it still had it on the doors, on the dashboard, even in the rear seats. This has none of that. The rear seats don't really have any lighting back there. I think there is a footwell light and then there is a light up here at the top, but it's not true ambient lighting. And I think adding something like that into this interior, even though it is a bit dated because this is an older interior compared to some of the newer competitors, would make this vehicle feel a little bit more premium. Another thing this vehicle does not have is any form of head-up display. Now, I'm not gonna complain about that because personally, I don't really like head-up displays that much. I don't really find them that functional because just a quick glance here, you can see exactly what speed you're going. And uh, you know, they just kind of distract you because I can't really tell the distance between what's going on in front of me. So that's just a personal opinion, but that's why I didn't include that in this list. But keep that in mind, if you do love head-up displays, you can't get one on the QX80. Okay, now for the last thing I kind of dislike about this vehicle, it has to do with this section right over here. And what I mean by that is there doesn't really seem to be much of a wow factor in this infotainment screen and infotainment cluster down here. It just kind of seems like it's transplanted for something that's maybe not as premium as you would expect with the rest of this cabin being so nice. Um, first, I'm gonna touch on this top section. For one, it is leaning back just a little bit. And so if you're kind of, you know, in a normal driving position. It takes a little bit of a reach to get to this corner over here where you have your tune button and then where you might navigate some of the stuff over here on the right hand side. Now luckily most of the screen is on the left hand side so you can easily access it but just keep that in mind that it's leaning far back. I would have probably preferred it to lean a little bit more forward so that when you're sitting comfortably back you could still access the infotainment screen. The other thing to mention is this infotainment screen is a little bit on the planar side. Now I've reviewed this in the QX80 and I think it was more acceptable there but this being kind of the flagship SUV from Infinity, I kind of wanted something a little bit more premium in terms of its software and its usability. It's a pretty plain system. Now, if you guys have seen any Nissan product uh, in the modern age or really any other Infinity product like the QX60, this will be a familiar screen to you. And it's not a bad software by any means. I mean, it works really quick. It's actually quicker than other Nissan products I've reviewed. It's really easy to use. It's very understandable. There's only three screens. There's your quick access buttons down here. So it's not challenging by any means, but for the most part, it only takes up probably about eight inches of the screen. These four inches are just almost useless. And the only time you can block out this screen is if you go into your maps function, uh, then you can actually do a full screen map, which is nice to have. But other than that, in any other instance, you can only use two thirds of the screen for any of your other options. And I kind of wish they allowed it to do a full screen size, which would have been easier to use if the screen was positioned a little bit closer to the driver. Now, when you compare this to some of the competition like the Mercedes GLS and the BMW X7, and you take a look at their software, it's a little bit more fancy. Uh, you know, you've got lots of animations and different graphics and different ways to customize the screen. This one's a little bit on the planar side and I think this looks a little too similar to something I'd find in Nissan. The next thing to point out is you do have a 360 camera which is awesome for a vehicle of this size, but again, it only takes up about two thirds of the screen and you know, it's a little bit on the smaller end. You don't have kind of what some of the modern competitors are doing where you have a 360 degree camera that kind of floats around. And even though I think that's a little gimmicky, those are the things that I think luxury buyers are looking for when they're paying 90 to 
$100,000 for a vehicle. Now, this one tops out just around $91,000. You can maybe get one for $92,000. There's nothing more expensive than that, but that is still a lot of money to put down. Now, moving further down, like I discussed, a lot of these buttons over here remind me of Nissan switch gear, and that's not something I necessarily want in a $90,000 vehicle. I get that they're essentially the same company, but I would have wished this to be a little bit more premium. I mean, these buttons are fine, but you can tell they're plasticky. There's nothing really premium about them. When you compare it to like a GLS or an X7, you have, you know, fancy switch gear with lots of aluminum or some sort of metal bezels. You have a lot of wood over here, and there is a lot of wood on the rest of the interior, like over here and where this little wireless charging section is, as well as over on the dashboard. But this is all piano black plastic, and it just doesn't look very fancy. It just doesn't wow you when you sit inside the cabin. Anytime you sit in one of the competitors, you'll notice, wow, this is a very fancy interior. And I just don't get that from this section. The rest of the vehicle looks very beautiful. The seats themselves are probably the biggest wow factor and probably one of my favorites among the competition. But this section over here, even though it has been updated two times since it was released, once in 2020 and again in 2022, I still think it's just a little behind the times. Well, there you have it, folks. Those were five things that I love and five things I hate about the 2023 Infiniti QX80. This thing is a fantastic vehicle, and if you're considering one or you own one in your driveway, you're gonna be very happy with it. it. Does a lot of things very well, has a very luxurious and comforting interior, and a pretty stylish exterior in my opinion. But there is room for improvement, just like every other vehicle on the market. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly car videos. Also check me out on all the social media down in the description below, at Schwazy underscore, and as always, everybody, I hope you stay Schwazy, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.